This is Mark Gergovich. He's a railroader. He's a uh, retired Air Force. No, retired railroad. But but you're in the you served where? San Antonio, Texas. And what was your position in San Antonio, Texas, when you I served was for a country? I first class, and I was an environmental health specialist in the laboratory. And this gentleman's got something to say. So we have a lot of things to say. So, so we just came back from the uh, Latinas for Trump. Exactly. We met each other for the first time. Yep. And he wants to share something with you. And, and you want you want to open it up like that? I just did. I know. So you do it. it. So now it's my turn. It's your turn. Now I get to just sit here and listen to your wisdom. This is going to be really interesting, folks. Good evening. Well, as you heard here, Brother Bill's got my intro, and he says I got something to say. Well, here's what I got to say, folks. Our country's in trouble. Mm. I'm a solid patriot. I'm the first son born of three sons of a retired, now deceased United States Air Force officer. And I'm a Serbian by ethnic origin. On my daddy's side, he's 100%, makes me half. My mother, God rest her soul, always claimed to be a mutt. She's English, Irish, Dutch, Black Dutch, Cherokee, Indian. She said, we never could prove it. I didn't argue with her. That's my mama. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Uh, Although my mother would say I argue with her. Well, we can move on from that. So I, just never, that I just never did argue with my mama because mm -hmm. if she said, then she said. Yeah, you're a smart man. Exactly. <laughs> I, I learned quick. Anyways, we are in trouble, which is true. We, we true. are, we are in trouble, folks. Yes, we are. And the deal is this: we need to bring our country together with God as the forefront. We need to recognize that the evil is out there, lurking and working busily while we're sitting around. This can't continue like this. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna be really honest with you, and Brother Bill here, I don't have all the answers, but I'm gonna tell you what scares me to death. As a veteran. And in Corpus Christi, Nueces County, I'm very prominent in my community. I hear a lot of things from my brothers and my sisters. They're upset and they're angry with the current administration because he's talking about gun control, speech control, a whole lot of controls. And he's out of control. I don't like this personally at all. Nor do I. When I grew up, my father's father immigrated to this country in 1920. My dad was born in this country up in Clareton, Pennsylvania. As an officer of the Air Force himself, he's a solid patriot. And growing up, I was the number one son, so I was the experiment. And I was browbeat with all this anti-communist crap, which is true. And I don't like it at all. And these people are trying to run our business and run our persons and control us like sheep. That ain't happening. This boy ain't a sheep. Uh, I always say that. I always say, don't be a sheep. No, don't be a sheep. So sheep to the slaughter. That's exactly right. There's so much going on. It's it's really really hard to combine all of this in one sitting. But let me get to the point. What's going on currently has got to stop. We need to get our country united again. We need to understand, folks. I don't give a rat's tail about your skin color, your ethnicity, what you look like. If you're born in this country or you immigrated legally to this country and became a citizen, you're an American. Amen. Amen. Okay? My people, all my life, with a name like Gergovich, which is unusual for the part of Texas I live in, okay? Commonly known as South Texas. It's really the Gulf Bend. They ask me frequently, Mark, what are you? And I smile, and I'm very proud to say, I'm an American by birth. Amen. I'm a Texan by the grace of God, mm -hmm. and I represent a Serbian ethnicity that I'm a wee bit proud of. That's for the Irish side of my mother. <laughs> Got to include mama. You know how it is in Texas, folks. People, if mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. I really don't think that applies just to Texas. I think that's nationwide. Mm -hmm. But honestly, what's going on's got to stop. We got to stop the illegal voting. We've got to stop the illegal aliens entering our country because. I'm going to urge each and every one of you that see this this interview to go to the local county health department pages of where you live and look at what's going on statistically. There is no flu. In the way she's county on our page, there's no flu cases. Folks, I'll be 67 years old next month. And you know what? <laughs> I've had the flu many times but not in a very long time because I am ex-military and I take my flu shot every year religiously. 
But why is there no flu? Because it's all listed as COVID. Why is it listed as COVID? Money, okay? If you're diagnosed with COVID or COVID related, the hospital gets $20,000. I thought it was 14,000. No, no, it was 3,000. I thought it was 3,000 for COVID and 14,000 dollars for a respirator. No, it's no? 20,000 for Is COVID. Is it 20,000? And it's 40,000 if they shove a, a ventilator down your throat. Right. So there's 60 grand ahead involved with this disease that they're trying to make out like the black plague in Europe in the 1800s or 1700s. I'm sorry people, the statistics don't add up. Okay? Granted, there's been a lot of loss of life in our country, and they're not insignificant. Please don't misunderstand what I'm saying. These people are important. But statistically, if you look at the facts, the majority of these people, and I don't have the percentage numbers, and I'm not going to quote numbers that I can't confirm, but I know for a fact that the majority of these people had underlying medical issues that caused them to die of the flu or COVID-related or COVID-19. My complaint with the situation is how many of these people have had autopsies after they pass away and it's been microscopically proven that they had COVID? I don't know of any, personally. It irritates me because to me it all sounds like corruption. Everything's around the dollar bill. This is wrong, okay? And the fact that the government's mandated this mask wearing and they're telling you to stay six feet apart, I have to be honest with you and tell Bill to. For years, I listened to Alex Jones, and I really thought he was a uh, disturber of the manure pile. And that changed about a year and a half ago because I started listening to him again. And folks, for the last year and a half, Brother Jones has been spot on. The mask is for artificial intelligence to recognize your face with half of it covered up. The government telling you to wear their mask, that's about people control. I'm sorry, I'm who I am, and I'm really not apologizing. I'm an old rebel. You ain't telling me nothing. And I'm not going to put up with the fact that my government, who I tried to support all my life and supported happily and honestly when I was active duty military, no, nah, this ain't going to work. Today, I don't wear a mask. I've had a lot of people criticize me and tell me, you're insensitive and selfish. I said to myself, I don't tell people this in public. You're stupid. And well, you don't read. Yeah, you actually just said it in public. I know, but <laughs> I'm telling you now, but when I'm out in public and people tell me this, I don't respond that way to them. I just look at them That's and say, good. you're entitled to your opinion. I'm going on about my business. But and honestly, up here, I'm thinking you're real misinformed and you're not very smart because you don't do your homework. I've done the research. I have medical friends that talk to me regularly. I don't buy it. I'm not going to buy it. And I am what I am. Today, I'll be 67 years old in a month. I'm retired from the railroad. I live a pretty good life. I've done a lot of things. And I'm involved in my political arena in Nueces County as strong as I can be. And I'm very strong in my veteran community because I try to give back to my people as much as I've received. And we thank you for your service. And you're a fine young man, and I appreciate that. Well, you, in conclusion, folks, God bless America. God bless God. And you people need to pray every day. And here's what you need to ask of him. You need to say, Father, will you please reunite our people under your grace? And will you please protect President Trump because he works for the good guys? If you don't like him, I understand that. I had a little hard time getting used to him in the beginning too. But understand something. As president, his first term, he did more for this country than any other setting president in the history of this nation. I know this because I study history. Here's another fact. As a veteran, what that man did as president to my people and my community is unthoughtable, unthinkable. Mm -hmm. Now, today, the Biden administration is trying to reverse a lot of that stuff. It's wrong. The veterans earned what we get. Mm -hmm. They signed on the dotted line and basically wrote a check to the United States government for their carcass and said, hey, if I have to give my life for my country, I'm willing to do that. And for that, we get what we get because we did that. That's not an entitlement. That's an earned, uh, what do you call it? Oh, benefit. Benefit. 
Entitlement? No. Yeah, no, it ain't entitlement. It's a benefit. It's no, I'm trying to get I away from that. Go, right. Right. Yeah, okay. Anyway, God bless everybody. Thank you for the opportunity, Mr. Bill, to have this interview. My pleasure. And God bless America, folks. Enjoy. Thank you, sir. Thank Be you well, my brother. Again. You're very welcome. Good man. Thank you. God bless you guys.